Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter and Vero at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Friday's edition of the DCEU Daily, where we've got some huge news to feed off of today and react off of. Blue Beetle moves from HBO Max to movie theatres in 2023. This is huge news. This is my opinion. I think this is fantastic news. First off, HBO Max is not a global concern. So if you're going to have the first Latino DC superhero just on, you know, a streaming platform that doesn't even reach the entire globe and doesn't hit all countries, for crying out loud, HBO Max is not here in Cyprus. Even Disney Plus that launched earlier than HBO Max is still not here in Cyprus. It's ridiculous that people can't watch Hawkeye and WandaVision and all the other stuff all over the world. So it's not fair and they don't even release physical copies. What else it says is, because we keep on saying that streaming is the future, but this is actually a huge decision. Because this says that maybe um, studios actually know now that COVID won't be so much of a problem, if a problem at all, by 2023. I want to remind you that movie theatres consult with governments and studios consult with governments all the time. These professors know how long this pandemic is going to be a problem for. So it would say that 2023 will be hopefully back to as much as the, of the old normal as we can do, which is very exciting. Blue Beetle is actually a great IP. Jamie Reyes is a great character. So 2023 in movie theatres for the DCEU is looking very, very exciting. We have got Shazam, Fury of the Gods. We have now got Blue Beetle, you would presume, although we haven't heard anything about a Tanashi Coach Superman movie for a very long time, we would, you would imagine that um, Tanashi Coach and J.J. Abrams' Superman movie would release in movie theatres also at the back end of 2023 if it's still happening. Now, what they could also do is um, take the Val Zod Superman limited series off of HBO Max, and who knows, I'm just kind of, we're just theorising here, and shove that in movie theatres as well. That would be your four movies for 2023 in movie theatres. But of course, that limited series may not become a movie. I'm just, as I say, I'm just theorising. So, at the moment, we've got two definite movies for the 2023 DCEU slate, which I think is very, very important to get the shape of that, because I did predict that sooner rather than later, we'd start seeing a good picture of what's going to happen with the 2023 DCEU slate. So I've really been researching Blue Beetle, because I don't know much about him apart from what I've seen really in Smallville, because they did a, a Booster Gold episode, which Blue Beetle was involved in. So, thus far, in Shazam! Fury of the Gods and Blue Beetle, you've got two movies for families, for kids. Two movies about a family dynamic. And so, this is going to be very important to Warner Brothers Pictures and Warner Discovery, because by 2023, that's what we'll be dealing with. So, it'll be interesting how the 2023 slate kind of shapes up. But what does this say about Batgirl as well? Because Batgirl is slated to release, I would imagine, at the back end of 2022 on HBO Max. But again, no physical copies when you're on streaming. Everyone, there, there isn't a reach, and they know this. So I think, I think they did the right decision with Blue Beetle. I think what they, what they, they sat down and said, listen, the optics are bad here. This is kind of our first, you know, Latino superhero. Right, so he, it's his movie, it's about him and his family. It's going to be huge for us politically and optically. And to shove that, hide that away on HBO Max w without a global reach would have been absolutely ridiculous. So I think it just shows you that the new Warner Brothers of Anne Sarnoff and the new DC Extended Universe that Walter Hamada has been plotting since 2018 is now showing some fruition. As I, as I say, I'm excited about this film, and I like the way 
the 2023 slate is shaping up. And so, as I say, we've got two shoe-ins in Shazam and Blue Beetle now, and it will be interesting what else is going on. So the things that have been green lit, and this is, I think things are changing all the time within the DC Extended Universe. You would imagine um, HBO Max's Green Lantern Cole would also launch in 2023, maybe at the back end. But maybe they're thinking again. If I were them, I would focus on things that are meant to be for television on HBO Max. It's very ambitious to be doing a Green Lantern core series on HBO Max, of course it is, because it brings new kind of diverse customers into the streaming platform. But also, as I say, what putting Blue Beetle on HBO Max does, sorry, putting Blue Beetle in movie theatres and moving away from HBO Max does, it says that Warner Brothers are not just thinking about the streaming platform because we've been told that that's what their main focus is. This would show that actually they realize by 2023, movie theaters will be back running. There's money to be made. This is kind of your Miles Morales type of character. He's a young boy. He's going to, you know, he's going to relate to young audiences, not just Latina, not just Latino young audiences, but young audiences in general and from what kind of the directors and the writers said about this at this year's dc fandom it sounds like a very exciting project and as i say to shove that away on hbo max made absolutely no sense so they've had a big big think about it and i agree with this decision in fact this decision really excites me and i would expect jamie ray as blue beetle to actually cameo in the flash movie by the way i expect a lot more dc characters to appear in the flash movie than mcu and kind of wider marvel characters appeared in spider-man no way home a little bit later on i will do a special review for spider-man no way home so i look forward to doing that for you as well but so 2023 really shaping up and with tanashi codes potential Superman movie and you never know you know it just shows you this decision moving Blue Beetle from HBO Max to movie theater shows you that the moving parts of Warner Brothers are changing all the time they're rethinking initial decisions it's because it doesn't really change the, the thing it may change about Blue Beetle it may get a slightly bigger budget I don't think Walter Hamada's a man who injects big budgets in a lot of things he's there to keep things as you know, on a budget as possible as long as the quality of the piece isn't affected but with it being a theatrical movie it's definitely going to garner some excitement what kind of box office could we see from a good blue beetle movie i think a good blue beetle movie will make shazam one money i think you're looking at about 300 million 400 million but I think the high end of that could be 500, 550 million. People will call that a flop, but it's not a flop because this film will be made with a budget. This is about people. This is about a family. This is about a young man. Of course, the scarab is going to use some CGI, but it doesn't. It's not a Superman movie. It's not a Flash movie. The Flash movie is a huge budget movie, and there's no question about that. And even in a little sneak peek, you can already kind of eat. I mean, even Barry Allen's brand new suit that they designed was very, very expensive. So this is a, a smaller film. Blue Beetle is a smaller film made with, with a smaller budget. But I think it's right and proper and ethical that it moves to movie theatres. And as I say, they do have a decision to make about Batgirl because... I personally think now that Batgirl should move to theatres as well. And Batgirl fans are going to be thinking, you know, come on, wait a minute. You know, I live in a country which that's never going to have HBO Max in a million years. I, Because this is what Blue Beetle moving to movie theatres also means I can, I, I can stream this by buying it digitally and I can buy the Blu-ray 4K. I've already, you know, pre-ordered the still book for Spider-Man No Way Home, and I've also ordered it digitally. I do that. Some people may feel that's a waste of money, 
but I'm a geek and a nerd and I like to collect these movies. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, this is another thing that it means. We can have physical copies. And I think this has to change within streaming. I know they want to drag you there, but 4K UHD on streaming is not the same quality of, of, of kind of visually, it's not the same quality visually as having it on hard copy because if you've got shit reception, if you've got shit Wi-Fi or, or shit connection, you know, you ain't gonna get that quality. It still looks good, don't get me wrong, but I'm still kind of a fan of the physical copy. One day the internet may go down, something bad may happen and we'll still have our physical copies. So that's another element of Blue, Blue Beetle coming to movie theaters. It also shows you that Anne Sarnoff and Walter Hamada you know, and this would have been a more Anne Sarnoff decision than Walter Hamada decision, because this is about this is about something else, about how the movie is going to be seen. Walter Hamada's there to develop the franchise, you know, in terms of storytelling and where it goes, the arc they choose to spread out within this kind of, you know, new, brand new, I would call this the DCEU kind of phase 1.2, if you like, from Flash onwards. So it's very exciting. I think there are loads of Blue Beetle fans that will be excited about this, and I'm excited about it too. So Blue Beetle will launch and release in movie theaters from 2023 alongside Shazam Fury of the Gods, unless Shazam Fury of the Gods goes back to 2022. As I say, things are moving all the time. Now you're saying, Mick, there's a lot of films in 2022. How is that possible? Who knows? But at this moment in time, we have two, two movies in the 2023 slate. And as I say, in the back end of 2023, unless it gets cancelled, Tanashi Coach and J.J. Abrams' Superman, that's three movies. In fact, the only reason we've got four movies, actually, we were always going to have four movies, um, next, not last year, next year, because Shazam! Fury of the Gods would have been in the place where the Batman is. So that's why Shazam! Fury of the Gods was moved away. So they probably are going to release around four movies a year in movie theatres. So then you look at Peacemaker and it looks like Batgirl will still launch on HBO Max unless they change that. I mean, I would like them to explain themselves what, what pushed them to this decision. Because if you talk about optics and representation and inclusion, and it wasn't a good idea to have Blue Beetle, the first Latino superhero on HBO Max, well... You know, this is a Batgirl is a female, obviously, and there's not many female superheroes out there, and she's a pretty good one as well. And they're going to have a Batman in this movie. Doesn't it make more sense to put that in movie theaters as well? I've been thinking about what Grace Randolph leaked the other day about a brand new Justice League being set up in the Flash movie, and she knowing. She's know, her knowing exclusively the first two members of this brand new Justice League. It's really interested me because I think we can assume that Batgirl will be a member of this brand new Justice League. I think we can assume that. I think Jamie Reyes is Blue Beetle. We can assume he's part of that. Now, Tanashi Coates and J.J. Abrams' Superman is supposed to be set in the 80s or 90s. So that's weird, but time travel, the Flash could literally grab him and bring him to the present day. Who knows? Anything's possible, but we're, we're leaving to one side. Now, what about, Val, what about um, the Val Zod Superman? Now, is he part of the DCEU? Nobody really knows what's going on there either. So we can also assume that Shazam will join Jamie Reyes' Blue Beetle and Batgirl um, to be part of this brand new Justice League. You can't leave Shazam out. Now, this is an interesting one as well. We've got Green Lantern Call. But now with the multiverse strategy, you could say that basically, um, whatever they introduce in this Green Lantern Call streaming show, that it will be DC Extended Universe canon. So these two Green Lantern, the Green Lantern Corps itself, could kind of, one of those members or two of those members could be part of the, of the, the brand new Justice League. But we heard ages ago, they're still developing a Green Lantern movie, which is also very interesting. We'll have to wait and see about that. Now, so we've got Batgirl, we've got, we've got uh, Blue Beetle, 
and we've got Shazam. So then we have to ask the obvious question. The elephant in the room is, you know, Cavill's and Affleck's Batman and Superman. Will they be part of this Justice League? I literally have to say at this moment in time, it's more of a no than a yes. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm still confident that we will get to see Cavill in cameos. If he survives the Flash movie and he hasn't been deleted, you know, because he could be deleted without us seeing him in that movie, or he could cameo. And if he's not deleted after Flashpoint, then he could kind of appear and be a member of that Justice League. So then obviously, so you would have to assume that Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman and Jason Momoa's Aquaman would also be a part of this brand new Justice League. That you know, these are marketable commodities that they've decided will be a big part of the DCEU moving forward. We have Wonder Woman 3. So it's looking like a very, very <coughs> interesting Justice League thus far. So you've got, you've got Shazam, you've got Batgirl, you've got Blue Beetle, you've got Wonder Woman, you've got Aquaman maybe potentially a couple of Green Lanterns as, as well. So shaping up really interestingly, and of course, how can I forget Ezra Miller's The Flash? But also because we're going to multiverse, you could assume that maybe that we're, we're looking also at a multiverse Justice League. So will they set up local Justice Leagues and a multiverse Justice League? So a multiverse Justice League could house people who are not part of the, D, the first DCEU Earth, which basically after Flash could be anything. So you could use the Arrowverse superheroes in a multiverse Justice League. You could use Brandon Ralph's Superman in a multiverse Justice League. Robert Pattinson's Batman also could be involved in a multiverse Justice League. So will they have two sets of Justice Leagues, one for Earth 1, one for Earth 2, in a multiverse Justice League as well? I don't know. I think if we do a Justice League movie, I think we, I think, my ambitions would be this, to do a multiversal Justice League movie. It sets it apart from what Zack Snyder's already done, and you can have different players from different iterations from these DC live action universes as well. So I would do that because then you could have Pattinson and Ralph and Tyler Hecklin and all these different people. So you could have a proper multiversal Justice League movie. Um, you could have Tanashi Coates Superman. You can have Val Zod Super. You could look, you could just do so many different things. So if I was making a Justice League movie, I would look at a multiversal Justice League. And I think that would be really, really exciting. You could have uh, Melissa Benoist Supergirl, maybe Sasha Calais Supergirl. But let's not forget, potentially, Sasha Calais Supergirl is Flashpoint Supergirl. So will she survive to be a big part of this? I don't, I can't see how they get a Latino actor as Supergirl, then, del then delete her at the end of The Flash. I mean, it isn't the best of representation. So you would imagine she's here to stay. So, as I say, things are changing all the time within the DC Extended Universe. You know, if they can move films from HBO Max to movie theatres, that's exciting and things can change. They're sitting down and they're thinking about their plans and they're, the moving parts are moving all the time. So I think that's where they, they will probably go with a Justice League movie. If Grace is right and, you know, there's already been two members set up in the Justice League movie for a brand new, uh, for a brand new Justice League, sorry, in a Flash movie, not Justice League movie, um, then I think it's obvious that after the Flash movie, they're going to announce um, a Justice League movie. I think what they're going to do is make up, make, you know, kind of look at the mistakes that were made with the setup with the original Justice League team. That's lost me a couple of um, other subscribers. It's funny, isn't it, how people expect an echo chamber. And as soon as you don't echo what they think and feel, they unsubscribe and unfollow you. Oh, well, I guess it was never meant to be. My opinions are my opinions. So, I think what they will do with, let's, as we're calling it, phase 1.2, 1.0, whatever you want to call it, they will build up some solo movies before they launch a Justice League movie. And with four movies a year, this means they can do it more quicker and still announce a Justice League movie. So, listen. 
A brand new Justice League movie is happening, whether you want it to or not. Um, I certainly want it. I certainly want Zack Snyder's kind of, you know, parallel universe Justice League 2 and 3 to happen. But they're things that we're fighting for. There's basically realities and things that are not realities right now, like a Man of Steel sequel, um, a Batfleck movie, and, you know, we can talk about that briefly because Ben Affleck has been in the news. He was misquoted in apparently disrespecting his former wife, Jennifer Garner, and um, saying that he felt trapped, that she caused his alcoholism. He's been on another show and he said this was absolute bullshit, which I believe him because Jennifer Garner supported him when he had his last relapse. So it would be absolutely ridiculous to blame her. But that's not really something I'm interested in. He made another comment in an interview, you know, uh, marketing his brand new streaming movie, where he talks about not being interested with IPs, with um, ready-made audiences. So we kind of touched on this the other day, but I want to go a bit deeper with this because it interests me. So he didn't mention Batman. So people are assuming he's talking about Batman, which he could be. He said he's not interested, basically he's not interested in mainstream movies anymore. So does that mean he doesn't want to play Batman again? Well, it's interesting because as I touched on the other day, he is in the Flash movie. He is potentially going to be Batman in the Batgirl film. Now he may not be, it may be Michael Keaton with Flashpoint coming as well. We just don't know, but it would point to him maybe deciding to have his character finished with in the Flash movie and not doing it anymore. If, he, if he's making those kind of comments, maybe he saw the Flash movie as a final chapter for his Batman, which is a very good idea. Now, for me as a fan, I'd love his version of Batman to continue, not necessarily in movies, but for cameos, just like what I want for Cavill's Superman as well. But if the guy doesn't want to do it because a lot of us Snyder fans are accused of trying to force Affleck into doing things that will kind of put him back in an alcoholic relapse, which is a, a ridiculous allegation, by the way. But if the man doesn't want to do Batman after The Flash, then the man doesn't want to do Batman anymore. And that's fine. It's up to him. We've seen him in a brilliant film called BVS. We've seen him in another brilliant film in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And hopefully, touch word, fingers crossed, we're going to see him in another awesome movie, the Flash movie. So if that's his final appearance and they kind of wave goodbye to him after that, that's fair enough. That potentially that could be the case. It's shocking. It's shocking and surprising after he said he wasn't Batman anymore that he came back to being the Flash. He was approached. They thought he would say no. But we don't know what was in those conversations. Maybe it was we're going to finish your story in the Flash would be very, very interesting if that's the case. So we're going to have to wait and see. But when someone's, listen, it's a pretty clear statement. When someone says, I'm not interested with IPs, with ready-made audiences, that does mean Batman. There's no misunderstanding. And some of my fellow Snyder fans are very upset and disappointed about that. And I can understand where you're coming from. Absolutely. But... Well, you know, this is not a dictatorship. If the man don't want to do it anymore, listen, he even, when he was in the interview, put in people straight about what he said about Jen Garner. He said, I don't mind being sad Batman. Do you remember the unhappy, the sad Affleck meme, right? Everyone was mocking. He goes, I don't mind any of that. Um, but he goes, a sense, there's some things when it comes to your family, you can't just let them lie. And I totally respect and agree with him there. So it's funny that he mentioned that. But... It's been an interesting road. The announcement saw people unhappy with his casting. The film was divisive, but his casting in the end was popular when they saw him in the film. Um, Justice League was just something I don't want to talk about anymore. Um, and then Zack Snyder's Justice League was amazing. He was amazing, and hopefully he's amazing in the Flash movie. So it's been an interesting, uneven road. And if the Flash movie is the end, which it by what he's saying, it looks like that. We're just going to have to... I see him being in The Flash as a bonus, you know? Because I wasn't expecting it. You wasn't expecting it. So there's too many glasses half-empty in fandoms today. 
But for me, celebrate that we're going to see him potentially one last time. And if it's more, and if it's in the Bad Girl movie, wow, then he's not done. But he's just going to cameo and not make any more movies. So he doesn't want to make the Batfleck movie, which is a shame because he was going to star, direct and write it. It would have been amazing. What we've heard about the movie sounds like the most amazing comic book movie of all time. Dark, compelling, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen because he was relapsing and they put him under pressure. So, and by the way, they didn't drive him to alcohol. He has a, an illness, right? But the, the pressure they were putting on him, like they were putting on Zach after his daughter died, doesn't help the situation, of course. But from a business point of view, you've got to be someone who's putting pressure on the director. Everyone does it. Fave does it. Everyone does it. So it's just the way the cookie crumbles, I'm, I'm afraid. So at the end of the day, I'm look, I want to see a Batfleck Batman movie like he was going to give us. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, I always feel I look at what we've got. So I'm happy with Man of Steel. I'm happy with BVS. I love the Snyder Cut. I still don't think it was right to do a Superman rebirth story in a Justice League movie and only have about 10% of Superman in a Justice League movie. But I still love it. Um, I think the original Suicide Squad movie is really good and entertaining. I love Wonder Woman. I love Aquaman. I love Shazam. There's a lot of good in there. But we know that the franchise started in a very divisive way. Whether I like those films or not, it's just the way that it is, and they're reframing the balance. Um, now, people can point to certain things with Walter Hamada thus far and say, well, his track record hasn't been great. The Suicide Squad didn't do well in movie theatres. You know, Wonder Woman 84 wasn't great. And Birds of Prey had a very toxic message about men. So, thus far, it's not great. But this really isn't what he's been trying to set up. As I've said before, the proof of the pudding is going to be in the 2022 eating. That's it. That's it. If, they, if they're successful next year, then they're successful next year. Now, finally today, there have been some test screenings, or at least one test screening for Black Adam. Alas, I haven't been there. I haven't been part of these test screenings. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the reaction has been, the best thing about the movie is the action. Now, it's good that the action's great, but when people say that's the best thing about the movie, I'm concerned. Now, apparently, the central element of the film, the front and centre element of the film, is the Justice Society of America, the JSA. Now, this pleases me a great deal. What this says is, is that you know, the JSA are going to play a very important part, not only in Black Adam, but in the future of the DCEU. You could do a 1940s Justice Society of America movie. You could have them in the modern day. You can do whatever you want with them, especially if they have Legion rings each as well. So that's what they're saying thus far, that the action was the best thing of the movie. But that could just be, wow, it was the best thing. I loved the action, not necessarily putting down the movie in general, but we have also heard that the JSA are very central to the actual movie. That makes me happy, and I think it makes every DC hardcore comic book fan happy as well, as long as it's a great version of the Justice Society of America. It means lots of Dr. Fate, who's my favourite Justice Society of America character, and I love Piers Brosnan as a James Bond fan, so it's win-win for me. So that's good. So... Listen, not as a strong as of reactions like we've had for Matt Reeves the Batman, that doesn't surprise me, but they'll look at these reactions from these test screenings and if they have to go back to do other things and fix things, that they'll do it because that's the point of a test screening. You get an audience in there, they tell you they like it or they'll tell you they hate it. And it's, it's as simple as that. For me personally, even though I haven't seen the movie or any form of the movie, I'm, I'm very excited about the movie. I think The Rock is serious about this movie. I think The Rock's team are very serious about this movie. So I'm still really looking forward to this movie. And hearing that, you know, the Justice Society of America are front and centre in this film is very exciting for me. So everything 
is up for grabs in 2022 and we're just going to have to wait to taste it to see if it leaves a bad aftertaste or if we want more, more, more. This has been the DCEU Daily. I admit your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll see you again tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Until then, au revoir. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen.